Hey, welcome. So this video will teach you how to do what you're watching right now on your screen with a possible reward. Watch till the end to discover it. Hmm. Eight months ago. Hmm. Four months ago. Well, anyway. Nature can be very complicated. But knowledge-seeking creatures you are, we always tried our best to model certain natural events with mathematical equations. These equations are often partial differential equations, and solving them helps us understanding our world better. Doing it analytically is almost always very complicated, but luckily there is a way to do it numerically. So this video will be split into two videos. The first one talking about how we can solve PDEs, for instance the heat equation, numerically. And the second part will be a coding tutorial on how to do it with Python. So this video is the second part of the two video series I did. So let's get started. We will first start by importing the two libraries, NumPy and then matplotlib, since we will just update a certain vector and then visualize it with a color map. Well, now to define our rod. In theory, we have a continuous rod, but to actually solve it numerically, we have to display a discrete one. This rod will be made up of different nodes, where each node is a point where we will measure the temperature. Now the rod in itself is characterized with its length and a heat diffusivity. So let's actually define our rod with a, let's say 50 millimeter in length and a certain heat diffusivity. Now to represent a numerical scheme, we have to represent two discrete elements, a spatial one and a temporal one. So the spatial one dx represents the distance between two consecutive nodes, whereas dt represents the time interval of each simulation. Now how do we choose dx and dt? There isn't any constraints when choosing dx, but as a general rule of thumb, the smaller it gets, the better the precision, since the distance between each node is reduced, and thus we are approaching the continuous model more. Now as for dt, there is a formula to ensure the stability. This is derived from the stability analysis of the finite difference scheme. If you don't respect this condition, your system might diverge pretty quickly. As you can see here, this is an example later on in the video. So you have to choose it very carefully. Now, now we can define both our dx and dt, as we just said, giving the length over the number of nodes and defining dt with the stability scheme we just saw. But we also need to initialize our rod and to do so, there is actually two steps. The first step is actually to define the temperature at the boundaries of our rod, so at the beginning and the end. This means in a certain way that the temperature must be known at any time. And the other thing, to initialize our rod to a certain temperature, to in a way know with what we are starting with. So the distribution before starting the simulation must be known. Now we can easily do that with NumPy defining a initial vector with np dot zeros, having a value of 20 degrees, and we can also define the first and last element having a value of 100 degrees. Now to do the simulation, what we will do is set a initial counter to zero. We will be using a while loop on this counter, increasing it in every iteration until we reach our time of simulation. Since we will loop on every node of our rod, we need to make a separate copy of our distribution, which will be called W, and then we will iterate through every node to then compute on each node the differential scheme. Now we have to update our counter after each iteration, adding a DT to it. And we can also optionally add a print statement so we can know at which iteration we are in. So the script seems to work, as we can see. Our average temperature is about 44 initially, up to 90 at the end. But now let's actually see how we can visualize our simulation with matplotlib. So the first thing we will be doing is 
creating a figure with an axis using the subplots. Now we have to bind to our axis a color mesh. So that's what we are doing right here. And then this function takes as input a 2D vector. But since we are dealing with a 1D rod, we will be putting U between two brackets, choosing a color map, cm.jet, and then defining our upper and lower limit with V min and V max. Next, we have to bind to our axis a color bar. We come all the way down and then show our plot. We update after each iteration the vector u we just defined with a pcm.set array. It takes a 2D like array, but since u is 1D, so we put it between brackets. We update our plot each 10 milliseconds and then we set a formatted title to keep track of our simulation time. Now I actually forgot to format the title, so I had to cut that out. Then after rerunning the code, we can see that the magic is happening, but it's quite slow each iteration, so I speed this up five times to make it visually more pleasing. But you can see that it is working. There is the distribution of the 1D rod. Now how do we go from this to a relatively complex 2D plate? It's actually very easy. So first I'll create another file where I will copy the exact same content of our 1D rod. This will, in a way, be the foundation of our script. And then we will edit block by block to adapt it to a 2D plate. Okay, now since we have two dimensions, the second dimension will be along the y-axis. We will define another dy exactly like dx. And then instead of making it dx squared, we are going to use dx times dy. Okay, it's me editing the video. Quick note here on dt. Actually, it's not the half of dx time dt as we will see later on, but it's more of a the minimum between dx squared and dy squared divided by 4a, which I later on fixed here in the code. That being said, back to the video. Now we need to update our u vector to make it a 2d vector by adding a, another dimension. And then we update our boundary conditions to set all the upper side to 100 and then all the bottom side to 100 as well. Now, since we are having a 2D vector, we can remove the brackets we put early on and then we can also remove the Y limit. Now in the Y loop, we are going to iterate along the Y axis exactly like we did with X. Now we have to replace our 1D numerical scheme with our new 2D numerical scheme. Now here I presented to you the formula for estimating the first derivative of a function and the second derivative of a function. Now, when it comes to our heat equation for the first D case, we only use dx squared, since we have only a variation along the x axis. Then we plugged directly our function, so this function right here, and same goes for this one which will be along the x squared. Now for our 2D heat equation, we will add the variation along the y axis. We will just add a third variable, y. This is basically the same formula, just adding the y here and then here. And when it comes to the x, this is also the same thing. We just add the y variable, but still the step forward and backward is on x. And it's exactly the same thing for dy squared, which the step will be applied on y forward and backwards. Now having this in mind, we can replace the expression of dt, dx squared, and then dy squared in our heat equation. So here in this case, di will represent the, the variation along x, and then j will represent the variation along y. So we express the second derivatives we just talked about, copying, pasting, just changing the indices respectively to match the dimensions. Removing the brackets once again when setting an array because it's actually a 2D array. Now that's all we had to modify in our script. We can run it now, but you will see that our system will diverge because the time step was way too big. Now it took me a couple of tries to actually make the system stable enough. I had to lower the time step, 0.3. It was better, but there was still an instability at a certain point. So I increased the number of nodes and then reduced even more the number of time step. And now we can see that the distribution is happening for the 2D case. So I speed this up a little bit because it might also take a bit of time to see each 
simulation each distribution at each time. But there you have it, that's a pretty solid simulation there. We achieved our goal of making a 2D heat equation solver. Now of course you can modify the code as much as you want, adding more nodes or changing the initial heat distribution. This can result in pretty cool simulation like you can see the ones here. So yeah, thank you for watching this video. If you have any question or want to know anything, leave a comment. I'll answer eventually. If you made it this far, you clearly deserve your certificate of completion. So there you have it. If you enjoyed watching this video, feel free to check out my other videos that are in the same style. So yeah, that being said, thank you for watching and peace.